Okay, new unit, new me. Or whatever the saying is. No, but really, for the third installment of my relearning art series, I'm going to be putting on a brand new face. No, actually, like, this unit's all about heads and faces. So funny, haha. <laughs> But all jokes aside though, for the last two units, I've had a strong emphasis on anatomy and that's all I've been learning for like the past month. So this time around, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. But by the way, if you haven't seen those last two videos, I'll make them accessible from this video. Probably up, I think it's here, here or down here. That being said, I have a whole new set of experiences and expectations to talk about. So let's get into that before I start drawing. So actually, a fun little fact about this is that I actually used to start drawing with the face, more specifically <laughs> with the eyes. So I would just go and I draw the eyes, then the nose and the lips, and then put the jaw like around that, which was a very terrible habit to have. Don't do that. Don't, like don't. One of the biggest issues with this method though was the fact that since I'd start with one eye and the rest of the face would just depend on that one eye. <laughs> if that one eye was off, if the second eye was off, if the nose, the mouth, whatever was off, the whole drawing was off. And because again, I was a complete beginner and I wasn't really trained to see these things right away, I would find that I wouldn't notice just how off these things were until I was pretty much almost done the drawing. And then it was like, well, I have to erase the whole thing if I want to fix the mistake. So it's just going to stay this way. So lots of cons to this method. In addition to this habit, my past with drawing heads and faces also has a lot of different features. I will say that when I started drawing, I was really going for like that anime style, right? So I would just say it to myself, like their faces are all the same. But as I continued developing my drawing style and especially when I changed it, my habits didn't change even though the style changed. So I still didn't really learn how to draw new features for a very long period of time. So now in this unit, I'm hoping to develop some stronger skills and methods in drawing different heads and faces that I can continue to use from this point on. Now, I think I'm going to be drawing a lot more faces than I have in the last little while. Now, I realize this intro is probably a little bit on the longer side, so how about I cut it here and we just get right into the content and see what this unit holds for me. So actually before I start watching any of the videos and making any notes in my sketchbook, what I was thinking I'd do was very much the same thing from the last unit where I gave myself a bit of a drawing exercise to start off with so that I could compare it during the second week. And this time around, I'm going to do the same thing with a face. So. I'm going to draw it to the best of my abilities with the methods that I've been using up until this point. And then once I've done that, it'll just stay in my sketchbook and sometime next week we are going to draw it again and see if it's any different. So let's begin.
not like upset with it. It's not like the greatest picture in the world, but I don't think it's bad. I just, I know that probably by the time these two weeks are over, it's going to look quite different. But I, I think she's, I think she's decent, like, but yeah, here's, here's where we're at so far. <laughs> Okay, so once again, I watched all the tutorials within the first week and I have been finding lately that doing it this way has actually been making the learning process easier because since I see all the tutorials within a shorter amount of time, I'm actually learning if there are certain ones that I prefer to use more than others early on instead of spending a lot of time with one tutorial and then discovering shortly after that I actually prefer something else. I also, while watching these tutorials, found that there weren't a lot of different methods, which is kind of what I expected. They were all pretty straightforward. You know, you start with a circle, then there's the guidelines. Probably the most different one I watched was that first one that kind of introduced the idea of the mask of the face. However, the idea was still the same. And as I said, that's what I expected when it came to learning about how to draw heads and faces because features can be so different, but in general, proportions stay about the same. Or if you are going to break proportions, you still kind of have to know where they should be going so that you can do it intentionally. And speaking of features, when it came to these tutorials, I did find that none of them really went to in depth on the shapes of the features. Of course, we talked about the placement of features and like the general shapes. However, there weren't too many instructions on how to draw like certain shapes of noses or eyes, just how to put them and what kind of position they'll be in. But I actually think that makes sense considering based on your style, there's going to be very different outcomes. Like some people might have really cartoonish styles and the features are going to look entirely different from somebody who has a more realistic style and pays more attention to kind of the nuances and tiny details when it comes to like a nose or like lip shape or something. We're going to talk about this a little bit more when we get to the part of the video where I'm showing you how I practice these methods. But for right now, I'm not particularly trying to pursue any kind of style. So I am just focusing on getting these placements down, getting the proportions fairly accurate and kind of knowing how a face is generally shaped before I go and play around with the details. So for now, I find that each of these tutorials was extremely helpful and they were really comprehensive on how to draw different angles. And some of them even went as far as showing how to draw from below or above the face. And that's something that I had been scared to do for a while. <laughs> So getting into what I did to practice these methods, I of course started with a simple tracing exercise and then worked my way up to drawing my own separate drawings of faces. But one thing that I have learned from doing these tracing exercises is that it's a pretty good way to start out with getting proportions down. And it does kind of show you the more realistic side of drawing faces because in general, people's faces are not totally perfect or symmetrical like they are when we try to draw. Like we try to draw faces that are symmetrical. People always talk about one eye being a different shape than the other and how aggravating that is. But in reality, it really is true that people's faces do tend to be a little bit asymmetrical in some way. I also think that it's really important to get started with a variety of different faces, which is why I'm really aiming to make sure that my references kind of have a variety of different backgrounds, both feminine and masculine features, instead of just kind of aiming for one type of face like I always used to do. 
And this way you can get used to drawing different features right away. Okay, so it is now day four and I just wanted to do this fun little exercise where I take some of my old sketchbooks and I find some faces that I've drawn in the past throughout the years and just apply the knowledge that I've learned about faces and proportions to see where these faces measure up. So for this exercise here, generally, I just kind of wanted to have a little bit of fun with my old art and laugh at how disproportionate a lot of it was. Especially since I had spent the last few weeks drawing bodies, I thought now that I have both of that down, I can just kind of look back and have a little laugh. But I also think that there is some importance in kind of figuring out what kind of mistakes you're prone to making so that you can try to remedy them better. But looking back at a lot of these old drawings and just seeing the variations in styles that I was trying to pursue over the years, it did kind of bring to my attention that I think a major problem that had me quite frustrated even back then was because these drawings were so out of proportion it was actually really hard for them to look good no matter what style i was going for and i think that could be part of the reason why i was kind of jumping back and forth between styles was because i was trying to find what kind of style i was actually good at drawing instead of finding the reason why these drawings didn't look good no matter the style and so I think now that I'm trying to make a better foundation for my drawings, I might have a better time with approaching whatever kind of style I want to do, just because I find that it doesn't really matter if your style is more realistic or more cartoon-like if the proportions that you're going for are inaccurate. Even when you're trying to break the general rules of proportions, you kind of have to know how to do that purposely in order to have a good result. And I think kind of understanding that now helps to open the doors for pursuing whatever kind of style I end up wanting to pursue by the time I get to that point. However, it does also make it a bit more intimidating because it does mean that there's just so much to choose from and so narrowing it down could be a challenge but in the end i think all that really means is that there's more reason to just get out there and try more than one style more than one way of drawing and see what you really gravitate towards in the end but you never really need to box yourself into one particular style or way of drawing and if someday you come across a different style and you think, man, I really wish I drew like that. You could always just start trying. And this next exercise I did really ties in nicely to the discussion of style because I took some of those old drawings that I traced over and then tried to redraw them in a more accurate way using the knowledge that I've learned recently. But I found that there was one particular thing that was stressing me out about these drawings, and that was the fact that I wasn't trying to draw them in a particular style. I kept kind of going back and forth between how I should have been drawing the features, even though I was only trying to focus on getting them down accurately. And I actually found it kind of hard to compare the new drawings to the old ones, even though the new ones may have had more accurate bodies or angles to them just because the older ones had more characters so it kind of felt like a step down even though i am actually trying to learn how to do things better so even though i had more of an accurate idea of what i was doing when it came to drawing the bodies or drawing the faces at different angles I just didn't really feel satisfied with the way that these drawings turned out. And looking back now, I am actually fairly happy with the bodies on most of them. I think that they look a lot better than I used to be able to do. However, I just felt generally disconnected from these drawings, 
even though I did them, they didn't necessarily feel like my own work. And this exercise actually brought up another point for me, which is just the fact that I find that digital drawing is kind of a tricky thing to transition into. This isn't my first time drawing digitally, but it's also still just the beginning for me. Like I don't really have a full grasp on digital drawing. I've drawn on paper far more times than I've ever drawn digitally. And I find that on digital drawings, the cleanness of the lines is actually kind of a downfall because it kind of makes it feel like the lines are actually much worse. And I kind of wonder how many other people out there, so please let me know if this is you, um, but are in the same boat where you can draw something on paper and be perfectly good at it. But then the second that you go and draw it on a drawing tablet, it just kind of looks like you've never drawn a thing in your life before. And I will say, I do think some of this is just because I'm only using the hard round brush. But please, if anybody has any tips on how to get better at drawing digitally, I would love to hear it. After the bit of frustration I had with those digital drawings, I just decided the next day that it would be better to go back to paper and see if I preferred the way that these drawings turned out. And surely enough, I did. I did find that these were quite tricky. I was using references that I used for the tracing exercise at the beginning, so the faces were familiar, but especially the third reference was fairly tricky, the teeth were showing, and that wasn't something that I have very much experience with at all. I did my best. I think that some of them are a little bit questionable, but I do think that they resemble the people that they're trying to look like, so it's not awful. I am thinking that at some point I want to attempt that 100 heads challenge that I see people doing. I think it would be a really good exercise, especially for someone like me who can often just gravitate towards drawing the same angles or same types of people. But I will say that since starting this kind of course for myself, I actually do feel like it's been easier to get out of my comfort zone when it comes to drawing and challenge myself a little bit more because I want it to be entertaining for people and not just be the same thing all the time. And I never really realized how much motivation that would actually be to attempt drawing things that I've never felt comfortable drawing before, which is ultimately pushing me to improve. So of course I finished off the practice for this week by redrawing the same face that I drew at the very beginning of the unit. And this time I felt a lot better about it. I went into it kind of knowing where I was going to put things better than I originally did. And it's kind of funny looking back because that first version almost looks to me a little bit more stylized, whereas this one just kind of looks like it's trying to be a bit more realistic. But in that first one, I was genuinely trying to make it look like the picture to the best of my abilities in a quick sketch. But I think that because I've spent so much time practicing drawing with specific references, I've also been able to kind of train my eyes a bit better to see the kind of nuanced details in facial features. But as a side note, I will say that I think my weakness here was the angle that I was drawing at was a bit weird. This chin, uh, if you haven't already noticed, was coming out a little bit lopsided. Don't worry, by the end, I did notice that and fix it in the final picture. You'll see that it's been changed. But overall, I think that this second version of this exercise was a lot better than the first.
So now let's talk about the assignment that I gave myself for this unit. The idea was fairly simple, just like the other ones, where I took three different faces at different angles and then tried to draw them to the best of my abilities. I did end up saving two versions from this, one with all of the guidelines and then one that is just a clean version. And before I move on, I do want to address that these initial assignments in the first few units are a lot more like studies, but I'm hoping that as I continue to gain more skills, each assignment will kind of be more fleshed out than the last one. So that by the time I'm actually done doing this little course, I'll have like actual finished pieces of art. I do feel overall pretty good about how this turned out. As you can see, I chose a couple of faces that were a little bit more challenging and I do think that there were a couple of mistakes and looking back at it, there are some things that I would change if I were to do it today. But in general, I think that it's really important to kind of get out of my comfort zone when it comes to drawing faces. So I am really glad that I chose to do that, even if they didn't turn out exactly like the picture. And in general, I would actually even say that despite faces being such a challenge for me in my past, this unit felt a little bit more laid back for me than the anatomy ones did, which was really surprising because I thought if anything, it would have been a little bit more stressful. But I do think that maybe I can just credit that to the fact that I have always enjoyed drawing facial features, even when I'm not doing it particularly well. I am expecting that the next unit will also feel a little bit more laid back and fun. It is all about clothing and hair, which is just so fun to me, though I do think that it has been a little while since I've kind of gone out of my comfort zone, especially for drawing hair. And so I'm really hoping that I can learn how to draw better hair, more types of hair. The funny thing is that I gravitate towards drawing just like long straight hair when I don't even have straight hair. So I am looking forward to challenging myself with that a little bit. But anyway, that does pretty much just bring us to the very end of this unit. I really hope you enjoyed it. I took a bit of a different approach when it came to editing it, so please feel free to leave me a comment and let me know how this compares to my last video. And of course, you can always help me out by leaving a like. You could subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. But just as a very quick heads up, I did push off the next unit just because of the holidays. But I will be posting another kind of video between now and then, so be sure to check that out when it's up. But that's all I have for now, so I will see you next time. I'm mostly just doing this for fun. Are you going to join me? Okay. Kind of learn. Oh, you've got so much to say. I think knowing. Yeah. I think knowing. I think knowing. Continually making them. Take it from Princess. Yeah? Do you want to say hello? Hello. <laughs> hello. But I also think that it would be fun. Yeah, how many times have I said that? Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Is that how many? Yeah. That's probably good, right? Oh my god, my eye. Whoa. Okay.